Working out which fingering to use on piano is quite a specialised skill. And I guess most of us rely on the fingerings that are given in the music that we buy. However, depending on your hands, these fingerings don't always work that well necessarily. So if you're looking for a great book that will help you work out better fingerings that more suit you, then stay tuned. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please don't forget to subscribe. Just hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. I'm sure I read somewhere once that Chopin was quoted as saying that most technical problems on a piano can be overcome if you can find the right finger in. I've looked for this quote on Google recently and I can't find it anymore, but it's certainly something that whilst maybe not as illustrious as Chopin, I've heard many, many respected pianists say. I've noticed that beginners often think that there's only one correct fingering. And in fact, on a Facebook group that I'm a member of recently, I saw somebody ask the question that if they didn't use the fingering that was marked in the score when they took an exam, would they actually lose points as a result of it? And of course, even more advanced pianists, or say grade seven, grade eight and beyond, have trouble sometimes working out how to get a fingering that will work in a given passage and they will often reach out for help to colleagues to look for something that works. So of course this is a topic of vital importance to every pianist from the beginner to the experienced advanced player. And you might have then thought that for something so important there would be a wealth of literature available on the subject. However, when I researched this, I found that really there isn't that much available. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you'll know that I'm a bit of a fan of technology and what it can do for us. And in fact, it was technology or rather social media that first introduced me to this book. Now, I'm a member of a Facebook group dedicated to piano technique. And as you might imagine, there are lots and lots of questions that come up all the time about how to finger certain passages in certain pieces. And indeed, I've asked some questions myself over the past few years. And there's always one gentleman who comes back with some useful suggestions. And it turns out, in fact, that in 2012, he actually released a book called The Art of Piano Fingering. Many members of the group have actually bought the book and they always praised it very highly. So I thought, well, why not? I'll get myself a copy, which of course I did. When the book first arrived, I went through it cover to cover. I really wanted to find out everything that was in there, but of course I still go in slowly enough to be able to read and digest because there's a lot to take in in this book. So what do I really like about it then? I mean, for me, the first thing was that for every example in the book that Rami gives, he also gives a proper piece of music to which you can apply it. So you can check the theory against the practice. Secondly, and this is especially where he's proposing fingering strategies that might seem a little unusual at first, he gives a set of exercises that you can do to help get your brain and your fingers more accustomed to this type of strategy. Thirdly, it's extremely well illustrated with lots of photographs of the hand at the piano so you can more easily relate to the written words. Fourthly, and especially of interest to me, it's not written from the point of view of the big-handed pianist. It also has lots of ideas and strategies for pianists who, like me, have got somewhat smaller hands. And finally, and this is what I found really to be extremely interesting, Rami proposes a hierarchy of things to take into account when you're deciding on a fingering. The first of these is, of course, the musical context, the musical result that you want to be able to achieve. That's always got to be the most important thing. Then you'll start thinking about a fingering that's good for the health of your hands. You don't want something that's likely to be injurious, of course. Thirdly, Rami talks about having something that feels physically comfortable for your hands whilst you're playing. 
And finally, of course, there's the fact that it's got to feel comfortable for your brain. However, when you're choosing a fingering, then you'll apply each of these in order of precedence. And that might well mean that you need to retrain your brain in certain areas to get used to an odd way of fingering that it's not really used to. The book itself is in A4 format and it's over 200 pages. It's available on Amazon and of course I've linked it in the description below for you. Clearly I'm not going to list out everything that's in the book or read out the table of contents to you, it would take far too long. I'll just try to give you some overview ideas of things that you can expect to look for in it. After some general introduction and scene setting, the book starts off with the very basic things such as the good old five finger position and the traditional scale fingerings that we all learned when we first picked up the piano. The book then moves on to some more complex material, moving through chords and arpeggios to over a hundred pages of very advanced techniques and tools to use for working out piano fingerings. And then right towards the end, as you might imagine, it starts to go into some of what you might think of as the stuff of nightmares for many pianists, such as how to accomplish trills in double thirds and this kind of stuff, just to name one. In my view, Rami's book is simply packed with insights and guidance, and so many things that I would never in a month of Sundays have thought of by myself. I can't go into all of them, but let me just give you one example. I'm sure you're familiar with Chopin's A-flat waltz, L'Adieu. You know, this waltz has got that small chromatic passage that gets repeated, I think, three times throughout the waltz as you play it. And of course, with Chopin, when you repeat something, the name of the game is not to repeat it exactly the same. It's also always to add something a little bit different. And Rami makes a very interesting suggestion of actually fingering that very small passage in three different ways so that each time you get a different musical result. I'd never have guessed that. And click me neither in the comments below if you wouldn't either. I think in short, the great thing about the book is that it gives you the fingering tools that you can apply for yourself when you're starting to look at difficult pieces in the passages that you're learning. Clearly, you can't give a fingering for every piece of music in the repertoire, and even if you did, then those fingerings wouldn't work for every person. So each pianist needs a way of being able to work out a fingering that's both effective, efficient, and generates the right musical result for themselves. I think really whatever your level as a pianist, if you have a teacher, then this would make something very valuable to be able to discuss during your lessons while you're trying to look at something that's causing problems. Maybe your teacher already has a copy. If you don't have a teacher, then I'd say this really should be on your list of must-have books, along with Graham Fitch's Piano Practice series. I say this because if you are going to try and teach yourself or coach yourself, it's really important to have a good reference library of things that you can refer to that will help you in solving problems. If you're an absolute beginner, then, of course, this is still a book that I would recommend that you get. You'll use it for years and years to come. However, I'd also recommend studying it with the aid of a teacher, particularly at first. Learning piano is not a simple thing to do, and fingering is a very complex area. And so having somebody with that little bit of experience who can help explain some of the concepts to you will be a great value, I think. Of course, if you're a teacher, then I think this would be an ideal book, whether you teach beginners or advanced pianists, whether you teach young children or more adults. I'd also go as far as to say that in the hands of a good teacher, this book becomes even more powerful and helpful. In short, I'm really delighted with the book. And I know it's one of those things that I'm going to be able to refer to over the years that follow in my piano learning journey. I've now decided that I'm going to start working through the book from the beginning. 
I'm going to take the time necessary to be able to benefit from all of the exercises that are suggested. And I know that it will just help me build up a greater arsenal of fingering ideas. The only real downside for me, I guess, at the moment is that it's not available on Kindle. I like to be able to have everything on my iPad simply because it's easier to carry things around. However, maybe one day there'll be an electronic version of it released. Let's see. If you're not already, don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.